governor's welcome okay. everyone my name is angela i work for the town of amherst this meeting is recorded it will be uploaded to the town of amherst youtube channel shortly by our wonderful it team. staff and at this time i'd like to recognize the chair of the residents advisory committee um, hi, uh, jim Distring. so hi so so first i'm going to read this script which i think is still accurate but i don't know because it still says pursuant to governor baker's march 12 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law General Law Chapter 38, Section 18, this meeting of the Resident Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, everybody. Good, okay. Um, Angela already told us it's being recorded. So this meeting is officially called to order. Good job. Um, so I've got an agenda in front of me and the first thing is call to order. And we've already done that. So we can check that off our list. Um, the next is approval of minutes from the last meeting. Um, I don't know if anybody took a look or more important, does anybody have any comments to make on the minutes of the last meeting before we vote to approve them? No. Me neither. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes from the last meeting, which was Thursday, October 6, 2022. Um, I'd say give me a thumbs up if you're voting to approve the minutes, and that's unanimous. So we're good. Okay. Can I ask a point of a point of a, I don't can't remember the it does, rule, it can just, Robert's rules. Have to be a point. A you question. can just ask anything. Yeah. Um, I understand that the Baker uh, rules about uh, remote participation are changing in March, and that meetings a certain percentage of meetings have to uh, people attending uh, can they still be hybrid? But a certain percentage of people have to actually be present or i'm just curious what that is particularly how it would affect us yeah. and i know there's a worry because a number of counselors have difficulty attending uh, because of family situations and uh, it's so gonna angela, be what do you know about that angela so the governor's office and the ag's office have asked for input on what um each community needs and desires um but we're waiting for a directive from the governor's office on the specificity of how the order will be changed. So we're not, we're kind of unclear if and it, it will it's effective. Go back to everybody in person or if you can have a quorum in person and then other people remote, we're waiting on the details of that. And is that effective yeah. March 31st is I think what I, March 31st. So we have a little over a month and a half. And then a little less than a month and a half, a month. Right. <laughs> so most likely we won't have another meeting before then. So we'll just have to find out what we're supposed to do. Right. Okay. We can meet again in the basement of the town hall in that room with no windows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good place to meet. Um, okay. So next on our list is a discussion of the role of the residence advisory committee. And um, I do just one thing to mention. Paul had sent an email to all of us back in January commenting about that. And maybe I'll read what he wrote first and then we can, that could be sort of the foundation of our discussion. He said, the charge for the residence advisory committee is pretty narrow. It draws directly from the town charter, section 3.3. The charter and the charge states simply, quote, the RAC shall assist the town manager with evaluation and right. selection of candidates for yeah. appointment to multi-member bodies. Um, then Paul went on to say, happy to discuss the role of the RAC compared to the role of the community participation officers whose role is described in 3.3D of the town charter. So, um, so that can be sort of a food for thought as we talk about the role of the residence advisory committee. I don't know if anybody wants to kick off that conversation or sure, Meg, kick it off. So I think this, this came up because I asked a question and mm -hmm. I think that Paul's email answered it. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> it's not our role to recruit people. Uh, that said at a future meet, so I accept, you know, I get it. Um, I'm a, come from a kind of community organizing perspective. So I, I feel that uh, somebody ought to be doing, you know, thinking about leadership pipeline, but it's not us. <clears throat> um, it would, would be interesting, just curiosity, but I'm not sure it's our role to chat with the community outreach people and get informed about how they do it. But I'm not sure it's, 
it's part of our mission to be informed about that. Um, but uh, uh, I think it's a shortcoming right now uh, in that the people who know about getting engaged know about getting engaged and if you you know it's yeah so it's a, but, it's just you know i'd i'd phrase it more as a struggle than a shortcoming you know it's just okay it's, it's always a struggle you know a difference I without found, a distinction without a difference maybe but anyway yeah yeah um you know i used after you know years of being moderator and years before that on town meeting i'd bump into neighbors and they'd say you know do we have a mayor you know there's sort of people yeah there's an amazing you know, frightening number of people who just aren't engaged. Um, and it is a struggle to get them engaged. Yeah, Anastasia. You're muted. There you go. Yeah, no, I, I want to just say I, I completely uh, sympathize and understand Meg's point of view regarding, uh, you know, wanting the, the wanting to, you know, find a way to encourage more <laughs> civic engagement and civic participation. Um, and it's something that I think any of us who have done any kind of community organizing or political work um, or just, you know, are active in our communities as volunteers uh, often, you know, sort of marvel at how few people really do come forth to volunteer for different groups mm -hmm. and participate in these kinds of activities. It does take a lot of time and effort. And, you know, having been on both sides of <laughs> that uh, equation, I completely understand that. I mean, I, I think that, you know, there's the capacity of the this group as, a, you know, as a formal body. Uh, and then there's also what we can do as individuals, right, in, you know, in, in community. And so I would say, you know, to anyone who's listening to this even recorded message, you're walking <laughs> upwards, right? Hundreds of, people. Hundreds of people. There's nothing precluding any of us from encouraging, you know, our community members and neighbors to, to run for office, to participate in whatever way they can. I know I, when I, you know, I go to friends' houses and, you know, I'm constantly talking about the things that are going on in town and how we encourage that. And I think it's, you know, it's clear to me that the mission of this, this particular committee is, is very, you know, clearly defined. And so that formal role does not lie with us, but in terms of what we can do as individuals, there's a lot, you know, so I just wanted to, you know, kind of get a record about that. Um, but I, I hear what everyone is saying. Angela. So I would say that um, as community participation officers, our team is um, doing our best as we emerge from the pandemic to be more present on voting days and to meet people where they are in line at voting and to explain how they can get engaged in municipal government. And we talk about boards and committees and commissions. We also talk about opportunities to just um, help like on uh, town cleanup days. And then we talk a little bit a great at greater length about, you know, the process of running for uh, town council. Um, the other thing we're trying to do is we're trying to be more visible at community events like Juneteenth and like the block party where you get masses of people and let them know about the vacancies. Um, and then we're also trying to plan a thank you to all the people who are currently serving on our boards and committees. <laughs> and I was trying to pin that on the end of April, which is when the National Day of volunteerism is observed. I think it's April 20th, but I'm looking at the week after that. And to have the people who are serving, not just the people who are up for reappointment, but everyone gather and have them bring a friend or have them bring a neighbor and do something really simple like lemonade and cookies. And to have the chair speak a little bit about what each group is doing at the moment. And then for the town to give a small thank you gift and to acknowledge people for their service. Mm -hmm. Great. So, you know, one thing we could do, I mean, we could do it. Oh, hang on, I'll get to you in a second. Yeah. I didn't say this. I mean, we could do it now since Angela's here, or we could make it a more formal thing at our next meeting to have, you know, a presentation from somebody who is on the community, community participation group to talk about what they're doing in more detail. So if, if you folks are interested, we can put that mm -hmm. on our agenda and we can you know, lobby for who, whether it's Angela or somebody else or everybody you meet together, whatever. So maybe we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting to talk Great. about in more detail. Okay, so Meg, yeah. Um, I think those things that Angela mentioned sound great. Um, in order to reach diverse people, it's often essential to engage in community groups where diverse people participate 
um, or in churches or uh, I know Alicia said she joined the uh, safety, community safety working group because somebody went to her organization, recruited her and she said she ran for this uh, council because she learned what it was all about. And I know it was, mm -hmm. I don't want to dig up the town meeting controversy, but I don't remember anyone who ran for the select board who didn't first join town meeting and learn how the town works, how the committees work, how the budget works and so on. And I think we need to be more, not this committee obviously, but not just the three of you either, Angela, but you could, one of your strategies could, tactics could be to recruit more people to help you <laughs> Uh, I'm part of a, on a board of an organization that runs this pipeline for women's leadership in Boston and the women leaders that have been recently elected uh, didn't just come from nowhere, you know, they started in school committees and city councils, I mean, uh, Maura Healy, nobody is, she's her own person, but um, the new attorney general and the uh, mayor of Boston, not, the, I mean, the, 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 those are people who, for whom there was a specific pipeline a leadership pipeline created and, and, and people identified at, at very low levels and encouraged and to um, keep going. But I mean, that's much more ambitious than what we need to do. We just need to find people to be on these committees. Or, and then that'll fuel people thinking, well, maybe I wanna run for the council. Uh, the council's a big, especially now, uh, the council, getting somebody to run for the council is, gargantuan request uh, uh, yeah I mean it's it, it, somehow they've got to make that job more doable so somebody yep. could actually have have a employment at the same time and not yeah. just be either retired or uh, wealthy or but I don't think that's a you know they've got to figure that out but that's but just getting people to and I'm talking about this too much but I can't I just, I don't think we can overstate how important it is for people to have confidence in Amherst government than to create more diversity across the board. Yeah. I'm just, I'm talking, preaching to the, I don't know, <laughs> the three of you, you know, yeah. obviously. <clears throat> so I'm yeah. going to stop talking about it. I just, I just think it's a great idea for us to have a conversation with the community outreach is that with the community participation officers and uh, brainstorm and hear what they're doing and how we can be supportive maybe yeah, as good. individuals more than a committee. So we'll set that up for the next meeting, whether it's Zoom or in person or mm -hmm. party on the town common. I don't know what it'll be, but something. <laughs> Fireworks. That. Yeah. Um, could be an evening meeting involving drinking, but I don't know if we're allowed to do that. <laughs> um. So anything else, by the way, I should mention, I have another Zoom meeting unrelated to this at three, but I don't think Good. we're in any danger of going over three, but anything else, you know, I just want to comment, you know, I do something similar to what Anastasia said, you know, I'm often bumping into people who say, you know, are you still involved with the town? What are you up to these days? And I always say I'm on this committee, the resident advisory committee, and I always segue into, and there's all these committees that are really fun to be involved right. with, and you should think about it. And right. I don't know how much that helps, but I just sort of try and segue into it. And whenever anybody asks me anything about the town, um, mm -hmm. you know, the challenge, there's a challenge getting diversity in the committees. There's just a challenge, you know, building up the percentage of people in town, no matter who or what they are whatever their demographic of getting involved and it's, it's a real challenge yeah so, this whole, so one of the things i i have forgot to mention is um brianna's been working to build a civic academy 101 which would be oh, kind of like a, a many week session one night a week for a couple of hours to teach people about how our municipal government functions and great for them to get a feel for what each department does and and there's you know there's a a continuum of difficulty and knowledge on all of our boards and committees like being on zba and planning board right. is really different from serving on let's say the recreation commission right like there's a or different... this, this... <laughs> i would never yeah. say that Meg. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah. so there's lots for cpos to share and there's I, I think we're trying to educate but not preach so that we keep the fun in you know yeah in great 
Thank you. Um, so anything else to discuss for now on the role of the RAC? Are we good with that topic? Um, public comment, anybody out there? I don't think so. My, grand, my grandkids are here. They might want to say something. That's my grandkids screaming. are here too. No, I'm, oh, <laughs> that's the screaming you might hear in the, uh, or the my, playful yelling. <laughs> mine are currently being quiet, which is good. Um, so <laughs> I had two things other on other items not anticipated by the chair. One is something that we mentioned, because I actually read the minutes of the last meeting, because I'm a good little boy. And we mentioned the thought of, I think Meg made a comment of maybe the CAF should be renamed from the community activity to CP community participation form. So maybe I'll put that on the agenda for next meeting to have that as part of the discussion, pros and cons of the name of the form and does it matter, does it not matter? And especially if people from the participation team are here, they could be involved in that conversation as well. And the other thing Thank I you. thought- Thank you. The, the Thank you. other thing I thought I'd put on the agenda for next meeting is see if maybe somebody else wants to be the chair of the committee. You know, it comes with a huge number of perks. I just can't remember any of them at the current time. <laughs> And, you know, considering that Angela takes minutes and reminds people of the meetings, it's about the least, I don't know, burdensome chairperson of any committee in the world. So if so, think about that and we'll have it be on the agenda for next meeting of does anybody want to be chair? Um, anything else that somebody else didn't anticipate? Yeah, Meg. It just occurred to me, <laughs> um, having had been schooled in open meeting law over and over, we're a committee of three. So if Jim and I have lunch, which we, we can't sometimes- can't talk about it. Can't talk about can rack. can we have lunch and not talk about rack? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. Or breakfast. Yes, yeah. I haven't tried the new place up where Jake's used to be yet, so. Great. It's good. <laughs> Yes, um, Anastasia. Yeah, just for uh, next meeting, I know that we had reviewed a list of openings um, a few months ago, I want to say before the October meeting, uh, if we could maybe get an updated list of that so that we can review sort of what other positions might be coming up this year, that would be helpful to me anyway. Yeah, so just to speak to that a little bit, we are in the process of figuring out um, people who have only served one term, if they'd like to be reappointed. Um, the town manager's process is very different from the town council's process. He, if he feels and he hears from the chair that people are making contributions and are showing up regularly, he just um, reappoints people for a second term most of the time. Um, but it requires me reaching out to them by phone and by email and asking them if they would like to be reappointed. So for our next meeting, I shouldn't I should have, in addition to the vacancies list, more of a kind of current list of the first, like how many more vacancies we'll have at the end of June when people's terms end. That's good. good. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I couldn't tell from your question if you're aware of this or not, but if you go to the boards and committees page, of the town website, there's a link to the vacancies as of whenever the last time somebody updated it. The 19th so of February. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's that's so what that, I remember of if, if how often that gets uh, it, updated. Yeah. But yeah, I update it oh, every time go. someone resigns or every time we appoint someone. Well, wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, just looking at it. You might put when it was updated. Although if you do it all the time, you no know, reason to do that. Oh, it, so it says it on the, the the dates right next to it, and it's at the bottom of the page. It says vacancies oh. as of two thirteen, oh, and wow. then in the PDF itself, it says it way at the bottom. Yeah, in the bottom corner. Oh yeah, um, she is great. on the case. I tried. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, one thing we didn't do that uh, somehow didn't get on the agenda, um, which is, you know, what have we done in terms of interviews since the last meeting? So um, I'll go first on that, which is. Um, not much. Our last meeting was on October 6th, and there was a flurry right after that, towards the end of October. And I did two interviews to the transportation. TAC is transportation. 
advisory committee. Advisory. advisory committee. And then in December, I did interviews for the water supply protection and for recreation. I think other people did some of those as well. I did the Board of Health. Uh huh. Have you done some, Anastasia? Uh, since October. I don't think they have the yeah. power, but I think. Yeah, there uh, just I haven't been many. We had one that we were supposed to do, and then it got right. rescheduled a couple of times yeah, over the holidays, and so um, that got put on hold. So that so was my thought as well yeah. on the grievance procedure. So I imagine we'll get busier procedure. in the spring and towards and the so end of the spring, especially. You... Absolutely. Yeah. Good. It was interesting uh, interview on the Board of Health. Uh, there was one candidate of color, which is the candidate Paul picked. And it was, I support, you know, he was his, choice, his choice, but it was complicated because there were uh, particularly one other candidate who was, uh, had huge, huge public health background, but it was, his commitment, I appreciated his commitment to diversity. The candidate who was picked was very, very good. So we, it was good. And also yeah. we discussed uh, whether the candidate who was very, very qualified, uh, both everybody was, but um, and encouraged that person to, that there'd be another opening in June. So I appreciated the nuanced way Paul uh, uh -huh. handled it. Which of you was on that one? One of you was. Wasn't one of you on that? On the interview? Or the health department? Maybe it was just um, me. If it was, there's, all, there's always just one of us. Oh, okay. And I was Paul, the other one. It's, it's typically one of us, yeah. Paul, the chair of whatever committee or group, yeah. and the staff liaison of whatever committee or group. Yeah, it was right. So we, I think, agreed to encourage this other strong candidate to consider applying again in June. Yeah. I hope that I'm not trying not to even use a pronoun. I hope that person does because yeah. it's a really important committee, especially we've seen in the last three years. Yeah, it's a it's a challenge for Angela and her group when somebody is not taken to encourage them to be on something else. It's it's, it's a hard thing. But in this case, that was the right committee for this person. But there's going to be an opening in June, so uh -huh. might work. It should work out. Okay, we have anything else to discuss before we adjourn? No, only that our next, the one, the next um, board that we'll do interviews for will be Affordable Housing Trust, and that oh. interview date is the end of March. So, if you would like to draw straws for that one, um, oh, I the, believe there are uh, the, two current uh, vacancies. Stasia wants in. Nice. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> I mean, no, I can't see in. I was going to ask if that was the one uh, that we would board. kind of reschedule no, from for the holidays. Yeah, and that's too important. It was. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy to do that, or however it worked out. The <laughs> town manager will control. Um, and does anybody have a sense so of when, what time frame we would like to have another committee meeting? Authority to recommend to you know. So I would think, no, Angela, was, you should mute when you're not talking because it's really, really annoying in the background. <laughs> there you, go. Um, you know, we could do approximately in two months or we can do more like approximately in three months. Does anybody have any preference? I see I a two, care. I see a three. I'm going with Angela. Okay. Two is good. No, she said, who said two, who said three? You said two. Okay. So in approximately, I'll put out a doodle poll. And we'll do something in the two month time frame. I have to look at what I'm up to, where I'm going. And is early afternoon work? Do people have jobs where they can't get away? Is early afternoon a good time for people in general? Yeah, early afternoon works as long as there's enough advance notice. I can just go yeah. on my calendar. Yeah. Same with me. Checking. I'm retired, but I have a ridiculous number of meetings. But with yeah. enough, same thing, enough notice. Yeah, two o'clock is a good time for me too, because ultimate season starts soon, but that's we don't start till four. So okay. how did the show go? How did the show go? The show was great. The show was an insane amount of work and time and stuff like that, but seemed pretty good, good. you know. 
no actors died in the process, which is a big part of what I do in the show because we were flying them all over the place. I don't know right. if any of you see the show. I didn't get none to of see you it. saw the show. Sorry, I usually do, but I got it got rave reviews from the oh, four good. and six year old for whom oh, we good. bought tickets to go. Yes, they loved it. That's good. It was hilarious after every show how they would all crowd around Anna Plummer, who's Ariel, to just touch her and stuff like that. <laughs> It was very cute. I saw, them, I saw the pictures on Facebook. They looked amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll okay. just add, encourage everybody to go to Cisco's where Jake's used to be. It's really good. And that we want it to succeed. Good. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. Okay. In that case, um, I move to adjourn. So all those in favor of adjournment, we'll do the thumbs up again. If you're in favor of adjournment, see a thumbs up. That's unanimous. So we are adjourned. Thanks, right. Thanks everybody. everybody. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. You'll be hearing from me. Angela, thank, thank you, Angela, especially. Thank you.